Ego is not our amigo. There's always somebody better than you, and there's always somebody better than me. You might want to grab some popcorn for this one. You cannot create a low amp stable arc with that size tungsten. Au contraire, but I'm going to let you speak first. Okay, so to answer his, to answer the guy from 6061.com, I'm going to show you my setup that I'm running. Okay, so I'm going to go right to an air cool torch so it's light and small, disconnecting the water. Okay, I run. Right here, I'm starting at five amps, okay? 0.4 for an up, nine amps total, peak 50. I'm gonna run 13 hertz on there, and I'm gonna have the background 76, 0.6, right there, okay? Got a triangle waveform going. So that's what I'm running. So this is gonna go up to nine amps. Those sound like pretty overcomplicated, arbitrary welder settings to me, I don't know. I'll explain what I do later. It's not even close to that. I have a can here, ready, prepped, ready to rock and roll. Rock and roll away. So, you have to forgive me, I'm not a camera guy. All right, so I'll show you, lighten up on there with an arc, it's no big deal. I'm not gonna burn through it. And then I'm gonna lay some weld on. You could see I got a 40 thousandths tungsten on there. What I got, a uh, number four cup. Mind you, my welding days are limited now, but either way, it's the point. All right, here. All right, so now I'm gonna weld this. I'm gonna turn the heat on. As you can see, no problem. That will not burn through the can. I'll do it again. As you can see, I'm not even moving the torch. I could sit there and not do it. When I said light up on the can, that's what I meant. Okay, I'm doing the same thing with eighth inch tungsten here. Continue. So now, let's add some filling material. Please do. All right. Now, if I lower the pulses, more heat will go into the can and the weld will look more fluid. Bullshit. But I'm gonna purposely try to put a weld on there that's slightly cooler. Hang out, I'm just not as steady as I used to be. Okay, let's pause right here for a second. I'm gonna give you two pieces of advice. Number one, those gloves you're using kind of suck for TIG welding with thin rod or wire, like you're using wire. You can't feel what you're doing to feed it nearly as good. And then... If your wire's curled, the trick is you chuck it in a drill, clamp the other end in a vise and spin it, and it'll straighten it right out for you so you can feed it better. Just pull back tight and spin it slow. As you can see, we'll have the camera. 
We're looking at a perfectly clean weld. There's no such thing as perfect. Keep zooming in and everything's imperfect. That's it. I'm just laying it on there quick. Trying to demonstrate the benefits of a smaller tungsten. Now, let's try to do it a little bit cleaner, a little bit smoother, a little bit nicer. Uh, let me see. Might have to go get more popcorn. Let's see what I can do. Put my wire here. Too shaky. Stay tuned later in the video. I'll show you how to prop better and quit shaking around so much. Got to be steady for this, that's for sure. When Iggy was explaining all of his welder settings to us, he forgot to tell us what the frequency was. He, go, he told us like 13 hertz or something for the pulsar settings, but he didn't tell us the actual frequency. So I'm gonna try to see if I can figure out what that was and just go by ear and tune it while I'm striking an arc. Let's go back over here and listen to what he's got going on. Try to sing it. Don't laugh, I'm a horrible singer. probably 300 hertz or a little bit over somewhere in there which has no relevance at all there you go to do it no problem to weld on that build up the ball That's how you can weld on thin stuff all day. And you're gonna tell me that he's not able to do that. I'm just giving a quick demo here. This is not trying to make it look obviously perfectly fancy. Now you leave me no choice but to try to make it perfectly fancy. I'm just trying to give an example of the benefit of small tungsten. If I wanna go here, it'll be even nicer. Not really comfortable, but try to respond without wasting a shit ton of time. No rush, Iggy. I got myself a delicious Baston Lager here to drink on. That super precise low amperage 40 thousandths tungsten you got there sounds like it's starting up every bit as rough as anything I've ever used.
There you go. Nice little weld on a can. No burn throughs, no issues. That's how you do it. Actually, that's how you do it. Stay tuned to see how I do it. I'm trying to shut this off now. Like I said, that's just the setting. You can see there, went to nine amps for the, for the machine. It's an Aspect 230. There you go. Aspect 230, welding unit. That's how you do it. Iggy, that's not how I do it. That's how you do it. Right there, simple. So obviously everything gets wiped down, denatured alcohol. Well, I guess then it's not so obvious. All you really gotta do is just get a dry paper towel and wipe these off. These finishes are just fine. There's your little weld beads right on there. Okay, nothing's burning through, good to go. Cheers, Iggy. Thanks for the great video topic. Now here's how we do it in the pros. Okay, Iggy, this is how you do it. Let me try that again. It's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll, Iggy. So the reason you're probably shaking around so dang much, Iggy, is because to me it looks like you're out in the middle of your table and you're up on a high chair hunched over. So what you want to do is bring the can back to the edge, get a really low chair so this is at eye level, nice and comfortable, very little pressure on your wrists, and just put your wrist right on the edge of your table here and walk it around. See how smooth and controllable that is? That'll help you out, get the pressure off your wrists. Or if you're just doing short little practice runs like you were doing in the video where you don't need to articulate around it that much. You know, all I do is just put something heavy on the top. That holds it plenty still. And then I've got this steel plate I used to use for old parts. I can slide it wherever I want and a magnetic base. And then this arm. So the way that works, you can just put this wherever you want. Rest your hand nice and comfortable on there really close. And then you're not trying to have to weld on some Jenga blocks. And the way you're pinching that rod off, you're only going to be able to go around the can, you know, like one or two inches and run out of rod. I teach you on my website exactly how I feed my rod, and that's exactly how I'm doing it with these cans that I'm welding here. All these little beads were done without fill or rod with eighth inch tungsten. And this one was done with the simple welder settings I showed you just a second ago and 035 wire, eighth inch tungsten. But wait, there's more for you guys that stick around and watch the end of the video. Thanks, guys. So that was a demonstration with uh, Miller. This was like $9,000 new. They're $16,000 now. The good thing about these is they go down below 10 amps. The prime weld only goes to 10. And I'll show you in a sec. You can weld cans with this too. You just got to get after it a little bit quicker. And the arc doesn't quite start up as low. But to me, this runs just as crisp and controllable as this Miller machine does. I got the same torches on both machines, so just to let you know I'm not bullshitting you, this is the one I'm using on the prime weld.
hey, this prime well 325 with the water cooler is under two grand versus $16,000. What do you think? So it's kind of unfortunate. A lot of people get tricked into buying a more expensive machine, you know, with all the fancy waveforms and all the adjustments that nine times, 9.9 .9 times out of 10 you do not need. And then in their mind, you know, you, ha you end up just, I was guilty of this too when I was younger. I got this machine and I was trying triangle waveforms and 300 hertz frequency and all that. And in my mind, I was like, oh, this thing's running sweet and it's making me weld better. But I don't know, I've done a lot of testing and you just saw that Prime Weld 325, you know, pretty basic machine, got it done just as good. The main thing the miller has over the Prime Weld is duty cycle. You know, if you were running all day with really thick parts, then that would be your go-to. But for the stuff I do and a lot of you guys out there, this is a great machine. I've been really happy with it. Great bang for the buck. So if you want to help me out to keep making these videos and you want a Prime Weld machine, use the code 6061 to save a few bucks and order directly from their website. And if you're wanting to get into professional aluminum fabrication and welding, I got a website that's only 45 bucks one-time fee that will teach you exactly how I do it.